Black hair care is important because it's, it's part of our culture. For as long as we can remember, black hair has been seen as untamed from the styles of hair during slavery to the historic afros of the Black Panther movement. But to black people, their hair is a sacred, cultural, and spiritual symbol that ties them to their African origins. In this documentary, we will take you through the cultural journey of black hair and prove to the world that black hair is beautiful. During slavery, black people were forced to wear their hair into styles such as braids, plaits, and cornrows. You now, if we go back to our ancestors, you can see the old pictures of the, our ancestors with beads and clay and dyes and all type of seeds and stuff in our hair. African peoples were brought over from, um, you know, West Africa, um, you know, during the transatlantic slave trade. Um, they had different forms of, you know, styles in their hair. And a lot of times the, you know, slave masters um, or people bringing them over in the Middle Passage um, shaved their heads. And that was one way to, you know, deal with something that, you know, is different, but also to kind of, you know, um, assimilate them into, um, you know, the new culture that they were trying to create with the uh, slave trade. As time went on, slaves learned to use their braids to create secret passages to escape their horrible conditions. Then in 1910, Madam C.J. Walker created a way to enhance the beauty of black hair with the start of her own hair care company, making her the first black billionaire ever. As time moved on, black hair care began to expand and become an expression of identity from the short flabberistic hairstyles of the 1920s to the micro braids, curly ponytails, and crumpled hairstyles of the early 2000s. It's something about like the versatility of like braids. Um, it would definitely be the early 90s though. And probably like the uh, early 90s, early 2000s type era because the braids and the versatility of it all from like, even like starting with like early sew-ins and. In the span of 80 years after Walker's products hit the shelves, black hair on both men and women have cultivated and become staples in the black community. Since then, tools used for black hair have advanced from metal hot combs and flat plates, which were used to straighten hair from a stove top to electric flat irons and curling irons easily available at any hair store. Hairstyles have advanced a lot since the 1920s. Today, black people have embraced hairstyles such as wigs, weaves, box braids, and even wearing out their natural hair. My go-to style would be twist outs. I've been natural for like three years now, and I really like the way my hair turns out when I do it that stuff. My go-to style, I just, I wear my hair curly. Like I twist it up at night and I'll take it down. I keep up, I try to keep up with it. Uh, if my go-to style, I mean, probably just waves. Like if I go to a barber, I just ask for a wave fade. You know what I'm saying? I ask for like a curly top or something like that. But like most times, like, I probably just stay with waves. <laughs> I mean, I usually wear it like this. Two strand twists, if y'all know what that is. Uh, I put my hair in like cornrows before. That was straight. Here at Her Glory Salon and Extensions, owner Tiffany Combs wanted to focus on giving beauty a classier look and feel compared to other beauty salons. When I decided to go to hair school, I just wanted my hair salon to be a little bit different than the hair salons I had been at previously. So I do offer private one-on-one -on -one sessions with my clients, so it's no wait time. As soon as you walk in, you sit right in the chair and we get started on your hair. Um, and I devote all of my time and attention to each one of my guests. So um, I don't answer my phone during your service. We talk about wherever, whatever you want to talk about. Um, I offer snacks and beverages. We have a coffee bar. We soon will have a wine and beer selection. Um, so it's like a whole vibe in here. If I could bring a DJ, 
I probably would. Like, I want you to be super relaxed and enjoy your service. Achieving great hair requires a lot of time, attention, and products. One single hairstyle alone could have been done with several products. My favorite product is Influence, Design Essentials, and Straight Requests. I spend a lot on Shea Moisture, Shea Moisture, and um, when I'm struggling, can to uh, Average client will spend probably on color, about 250 or more. Average client on extensions, about 500 or more. Just like everything else in life, beauty comes with a price tag. According to several articles online, black women spend nine times more on ethnic targeted beauty and grooming supplies and products than the average for all customers. If we were to do the math, that would be a total of about $2.5 billion spent on hair care alone. Hair loss is also a downfall of frequent hair care or poor hair maintenance. Um, more than about 70% of people will experience hair loss at some point in their life. Um, and in women, it's very common as they get older or due to medication. Most black women in particular are prone to alopecia caused by heat, chemicals, and tight styles that pull the hair root, like weaves, braids, dreadlocks, and extensions. Um, black hair is seen as something that is worn and then also um, in some contexts a problem. I believe, um, you know, most of the time when, when I watch the news and I watch the media, they portray like dreads as almost like it's, you're a thug if you have dreads. It's almost like that you're uneducated, you, you don't want to work, you're lazy and just basically a, a sorry individual. In more contemporary times, um, this is done by employers. So there have been a lot of, you know, companies who have banned certain hairstyles or discriminated against different people for having different hairstyles. And then even in school, so for instance, people with dreadlocks have been, um, you know, told that they need to change their hairstyle in order to get a job or remain in their job. Um, you know, also, you know, young athletes have been told to change their hairstyles um, just to compete as well. So there's always been this, um, <clears throat> you know, effort by, you know, people, you know, in society. There's a general trend within society to monitor and socially control um, people of color and their hair is definitely one major area. So I feel like growing up, I was, it was more so like if my hair wasn't a looser curl pattern, then it was seen as unkept or it was seen as, uh, I wasn't as beautiful as probably the girl next to me because her hair might've been a little looser in pattern. I really think the only way for like, a black man to really be acceptable in society is to either be bald or just have a low cut. It's a lot of money. <laughs> it's a lot of everything that goes inside of it. But it's to have a pretty outcome or easy to manage hair. After many trials and tribulations and years of discrimination, black people are finally learning how to embrace their God-given hair. Before I, you know, grew out this fro, you know, I questioned whether or not I'd be accepted. And ultimately, you know, I just came to the conclusion that I want to express myself in the way that I view, um, you know, is, you know, appropriate for me. I don't think it's nothing that could be changed with African-Americans and their hair. As a culture, we always are doing something different and coming up with new trends um, in the industry. So, no, we, we're who we are. From kinky to coily, natural to relaxed, short to long, 
and thick to thin, black people are exclaiming to the world that their hair is a part of their identity. I've had clients come in after losing a loved one or just having a bad week, and once they get their hair done, that confidence just boosts. You know, the bigger the hair, the closer to God, and, and the better you feel when your hair is done. No matter how bad the world may treat them, black people and their hair are still here, continuously representing for the culture. We can do so many different things with our hair because we have so many different hair textures. And so I, I think that everybody should just embrace, embrace it.